If you're joining me with a cigar box guitar, tune your guitar to G. Here's the G. Because it will be easier to follow along with today's lesson if we're both tuned to the same key. Now, if your instrument cannot handle tuning up to a G, if don't worry about it, do the pause and then try the technique in your own key and then come back. But those of you that can, tune to a G for me. Okay, why finger pick rather than use a plectrum? Because there are advantages to using a plectrum over just using bare fingers as I do. A pick gives you a louder sound and a punchier sound, a, a sound that cuts through an ensemble, gives you good clarity. Um, if you use bare fingers like me, you get a more muted sound, a bassier tone, but a, a muted one nonetheless. And that's its own aesthetic, its own thing, but it doesn't give you the cut. That's one disadvantage of finger picking. Now, the thing is, it's harder to achieve uh, polyphony or having different voices work at the same time with a pick. Now, I've seen amazing guitarists achieve amazing polyphony using a pick or a plectrum and respect to those guys who can do it. But it's much easier to achieve the same level of polyphony using just these three fingers here. So for me, this is a plus for finger picking. Now, why haven't I bothered to become, look up some tutorials and become good at using a plectrum? Because I can get the advantages of a plectrum while finger picking if I do two things. I can one, grow my nails like a classical guitarist and have built in plectrums now. I haven't done this because I'm a crafter and it's hard to use your hands when you have long nails. Now, something that I'm experimenting with is using finger picks. And once I've mastered playing with my finger picks, I'll have the full advantage of finger picking with the sound of a plectrum. So I'll get the best of both worlds using finger picks. Now, I, I'm not going to come on and play with my finger picks today because I'm still getting used to them. It does take a little bit of uh, translation in technique going from bare fingers to finger picking. I mean, it extends the length of your fingers. You feel the pressure of the strings in different places on your fingers. So you kind of lose your muscle memory when you first try to transition from bare fingers to finger picks. But that's what I'm working on. And when I've mastered the finger pick, I'll, I'll come on and show you what finger picks I'm using and play a little for you guys. Anyway, what's on the docket? This is what's in the game plan today. We're going to look at my go-to finger picking techniques. And all of these, by the way, are blues staples. You can apply them to other genres, but they are definitely blues staples. We're going to start with the techniques that require the lowest level of finger independence. And we're going to move all the way up to the techniques that require high levels of finger and independence. The first thing that we're going to look at is the one flat seven flat six five descending chord progression. I like to play this with a three finger simultaneous plucking technique that looks just like this when I'm playing it. All right. And I also play this um, blues chord progression with alternating fingers with this kind of movement. Fingers working together, uh, but not exactly independent. Now, this chord progression, I'll explain what these symbols mean, by the way. This chord progression is used in tons and tons of classic blues songs, such as Why Don't You Do Right by Mississippi Fred McDowell. I found another bluesy song that uses this pattern called One Meatball. Shout out to my friends from B-Roll Stage. 
and uh, Hit the Road Jack uses that chord progression throughout the song. And so we're going to look at the uh, finger picking techniques that I use to play this chord progression. Before we move on, let me show you what these symbols mean. So I'm using the key of C major and its parallel minor to explain what these symbols mean because it's it's very easy to think in the key of C. Why? Because C major has no sharps and no flats. These Roman numeral symbols in classical music analysis are used to indicate what chord you're playing in the context of a key. The symbols also give you information as to what the quality of the chord is, major, minor, augmented, or diminished. For example, if you build a chord on scale degree one, how do you build a chord? You just skip a letter, C, E, G. This triad would be a major triad, okay? And major triads get a capital Roman numeral. So the chord on scale degree one of a major key is a major chord. If I were to build a chord on D, S, A, which is a chord built on scale degree two, the quality of that chord would be a minor chord. Thus, you have the uh, lower Roman numerals. All right, let's skip to the chord built on scale degree seven, which is using a different symbol. It's using um, lowercase Roman numerals with a little degree sign at the end. When you build a triad on B, D, F, you get a diminished chord. So the chord built on scale degree seven is diminished. And that's the symbol for a diminished chord. Now, in the hit the road jack chord progression that I just showed you, which is a chord progression of one, flat, seven, flat, six, five, except we'd use the major mode of five, all right? Since we're in a minor key, we'd use the minor key Roman numerals, all right? If you were to build a chord on scale degree one in a minor key, you get a minor triad, thus the lowercase one. Let's go to six. If you were to build a triad on scale degree six, you'd have a major triad, thus the capital Roman numeral six. Now, just a disclaimer for those of you using Roman numerals for music analysis in the context of classical music. When you are analyzing classical music in minor keys, you don't have to use the flat before Roman numerals, all right? I'm using the flat because, you know, I'm always comparing the key with its parallel minor because on a three string cigar box guitar, we're only functioning in one key and all of its parallel keys. So we're looking both at major and minor key at the same time. In classical music, you would use it if you're trying to represent modal mixture. If you're not representing modal mixture, you don't have to use these. You're not always comparing the uh, parallel major and minor together, okay? But in this case, again, this cigar box guitar, I am functioning in, in all the parallel keys at the same time. It's just clearer to show. So that's the first thing we're going to hit, is the hit the road jack chord progression, simultaneous fingers and alternating fingers. And then we're going to move to the blues ending melodic pattern. And I'm going to use syllables for this. All right. The melodic pattern is te, la, le, sol. That is a little chromatic pattern leading up to sol. I'm going to show you how to play this chromatic pattern as a single line or with alternating fingers. And then once we get past this, we're going to go to the highest level of polyphony, talk about the walking index finger and middle finger 
plucking pattern for playing melodies against your thumb playing the bass line. So without any further ado, let's hit the road, Jack. Okay, now, in order to show you what I'm doing with these three fingers in the hit the road jack pattern, I kind of have to show you what I'm doing in the left hand with my slide as well. So I'll quickly show you what's happening with the slide so that you can follow along with the finger picking. Here's my trusty DIY ceramic slide those of you who have handy dandy scale degree markers on the neck of your cigar box guitar you'll be able to find uh, these placements easier than people that don't for those of you that don't i will also relay the information through fret marker number okay but for those of you who have scale degree markers place your slide on scale degree one position and again I'm grabbing all three strings with my slide then move to flat seven regular seven major mode seven is a half step under scale degree one you just want to go one more further than that and you got your flat seven and then move to flat six which is which is a half step lower than six where your dot indicator is and then go to five okay now for those of you who don't have scale degree markers on your cbg let me give you the fret uh, numbers. I think this is fret number 12. Let me check. Yeah. Okay. Fret number 12. 12. Ten. Eight. And seven. Again. 12, 10, 8, and 7. Strum it out. Strum it out first so that you have the, the pattern in your left hand. I like a, a downward flicking pattern. Feels good on my fingers, that's why I do it. Something else that I need to mention here, and this comes from the, the classical guitar lessons that I took in school um, a long, long, long time ago. You want to make sure that your picking hand is, is pretty free. It's free floating. And I have my forearm kind of resting on the guitar so that it can be free floating. Uh, something that my guitar teacher used to tell me not to do is this. Have a finger connected to the fretboard. That's why I find uh, muted patterns so hard to do because I have to have m my palm glued onto the strings. But with practice, I've been able to switch between this free hand position and the muting hand position. But today, we're not going to mute any of the strings. You want a free floating hand. Let go of that pinky from the body of your guitar so that you have a free floating hand. Okay, let's down strum this pattern together. All right. do our most basic finger picking thing where all three fingers are working together 
plucking the strings at the same time. Very little independence between the fingers and that's why it's easy to execute. You want to do a pinching motion like this. It's going to use my thumb to pluck the deepest string and use my index and middle finger to pluck the remaining strings. And let's give it a shot. Thumb, index, middle finger. Make sure you're relaxed and not doing this with any sort of tension, guys. Find a relaxed position. This is not relaxed for me, it's kind of uncomfortable, but just so you could see what's happening with my fingers here. Yeah. Okay, that kind of motion, that kind of motion. Get out of here, give me some money too. the road jack and don't you come back no more no more no more no more hit the road jack and don't you come back no more there are tons and tons of blues songs that you could play with this chord progression and the plucking pattern and when you get used to this plucking pattern you can combine it with that flicky down strum. Now we're gonna look at the blues ending melodic pattern. You could use this to end a section of a, a 12 bar blues or end the 12 bar blues songs. I'll show you both versions. Now I mentioned that this melodic ending uses the following scale degrees. Te, La, Le, and Sol. If this is Do. Te, Do. And I'm gonna use uh, Te on the middle string that's scale degree flat seven on the middle string and you can get that by uh, placing your slide on fret number three of the middle string fret three of the middle string will give you flat seven or te in solfeggio a movable do solfeggio te do so that's where the pattern begins and then we just do a chromatic scale all the way down to scale degree five from there so you can either play this pattern with just your thumb or you could do the alternating finger pattern that i like to do Let's practice uh, those two things. You can do it with your thumb, and again, you start the pattern on fret number three. Try to grab only the middle string with your slide. Okay? Okay? And with the alternating finger pattern, which is what I prefer. So if you're playing a song Okay, or you can go to five to start the uh, start the 12 bar blues again. All right now what i'm doing is i'm i'm still only grabbing the middle string with my slide 
but I'm alternating between thumb and index or thumb and middle. Whatever you prefer, it doesn't matter. You can use either one. I'm used to playing it with thumb and middle finger for some reason. That's how I've adapted to playing it. Again, you're still just grabbing the middle string with the slide. <laughs> You can also, if you want, grab the middle and last string with the slide to get this. Either one works, whatever you prefer. So you're playing a 12 bar blues. I have the bad habit of planting my hand in the middle of the pattern. Again, I gotta practice that myself to keep my playing loose and not introduce tension to the playing so that I can play longer. It, it, it sometimes I have to consciously think, get your hand off of that soundboard. So I'm reminding myself and reminding you guys, uh, don't get into bad habits because they, they're hard to shake. All right, let's do that again. look at the walking index middle finger playing technique these are the two guys that are going to be responsible for the melody and then when we get used to playing melodies with these we're going to introduce the thumb to add a bass line and play melody and bass at the same time i'm going to add a little distortion because it's fun why not A good way to start getting used to the walking finger pattern, start on the top string. I keep saying pattern, but I mean technique. I think it makes melodies sound better than if I were just to pick it out with my, my thumb. a cute little trick that I learned guys you want to just pick out a blue scale quote unquote there are many blue scales but a blue scale really easily melodically just follow the dots on your guitar <laughs> fourth dot is on scale degree six but the other dots imply a minor key major scale degree six with minor scale degrees you're implying dorian mode now i'm in g or at least i i hope i'm still in g i probably drifted a little bit following the dot indicators on the last string which is do I'd be implying G Dorian. Try that. Try the alternating finger and just following the dots on your um, fingerboard. Now play around with that. talk about adding bass the bass line 
this was the hardest thing for me to pick up. You guys have probably heard me play this a ton of times. This is an improv that has turned into a fixed song for me because I play it the same way or almost the same way every time. <laughs> So I got a very simple bass line going there and what's hard even for me now is to keep that steady bass line going while these two fingers are just doing their own thing. A way you could get started is just doing this. Your, have your thumb play quarter notes and then have each finger play a half note one two switch one two switch one two one two so each finger comes together with the bass after a half note and when you can do it without having to worry about doing anything in your left hand then try to throw some melodic stuff in there and I'm just throwing in the dot notes there following the dots start off with one note per half note once you get used to playing that you can throw in in between notes It's even hard for me to do in between notes because my thumb wants to be doing something at the same time as the other fingers are moving. All right, we have reached the end of the lesson, everyone. Um, and so I have nothing more to share with you in as far as finger picking is concerned. I'm still on a finger picking learning journey. I still have a lot to learn. The most recent finger picking pattern that I learned was from a channel called Coda Tuition and this is the pattern I'm talking about. that pattern again on Coda Tuition's channel. I've included his video on how to play that finger picking pattern in this playlist. I have the my CBG lessons playlist set up so that you're going from 
basic techniques to more advanced techniques you're gonna find uh, that video on this pattern by Coda Tuition towards the end of the list. I am not gonna steal his thunder and, and show you his this pattern. Go to uh, his video in my playlist and learn that pattern. And we're gonna cover how to pick out melodies on your CBG by ear. There's a lot to cover. For example, if you do not have scale degree markers on your cigar box guitar, you're gonna want to add some. And I'll show you where to place them. So we'll start with that. I'll review what these scale degree markers mean. And I will show you how to use them to pick out melodies. And that's going to require a little bit of ear training. We're going to have to learn how to sing the major scale up and down and skip around very well. And then we're going to do natural minor scale up and down skip around using scale degree numbers and movable dough solfeggio for those of you who prefer movable dough solfeggio. So that's the prep work. I know it's a little bit tedious, but I promise this will be very, very useful for you because once you can pick out melodies by ear, guess what? You can also pick out chord progressions by ear and you will not have to rely on tablature or stuff that people post online to figure out how to play the music you want to play. It will be well worth it, I promise. Thank you guys for being here. Chaito.